Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to draw and color a beetle using alcohol markers with a twist. We're gonna do half the drawing with brush tip markers and half with chisel bullet tip markers. That way you can kind of see how they compare, how you might vary the techniques depending on the type of markers you have. And if you're looking for markers, this can help you decide what's best for you. This video is sponsored by Bianyo. I'll be using their brush markers, their chisel bullet markers, and also their marker pad and fine liners. They make really high quality art products and the prices are fantastic. I will link what I used down below so you can find them for yourself if you're interested in them. I'm starting off by sketching the beetle with a, an erasable color pencil. And I like to use the erasable color pencils because, well, if I make a mistake, I can erase, but I also find it very inspiring to draw with a colored lead. So if you ever feel like you're stuck in a rut, try um, a color pencil. A lot of times it will just kind of be that novel, um, different thing that'll help, you know, spark your creativity. And you can erase this kind, but um, even if you used a regular colored pencil, you could probably erase some of it as well. The other thing I like about the colored pencil is that uh, as long as you're not using a ton of it, those lines are just going to disappear once you start adding your marker, which is really nice. You won't have the harsh graphite lines or harsh fine liner lines. In fact, if I'm going to fine line a project, I generally wait until I'm all done and have made all of my um, corrections and everything, and then I just do that fine lining at the end if I feel like it needs that little bit of crispness. Um, you're going to notice from the reference photo that's up in the corner of the screen there that I made some changes to the reference photo. So the beetle in the reference photo is tilted a little bit and I wanted this to be really symmetrical so I could do half of the drawing in the brush marker and half in the chisel bullet tip marker just to keep it kind of fair and about the same size. I also liked how I could see the legs on the right side of the beetle so I drew them um, pretty much the same way on the left side of the beetle just to again keep it symmetrical and um, and uh, have a very kind of um, apples to apples comparison here between the two sides. Now I started in by putting kind of the reflection areas so that really pale pale blue on the edge of the beetle and um, anywhere I saw that and then I stippled, I kind of tapped in with the brush end, any of the little textured like pores that uh, you can see in the shell, those reflections on those little pores I think really help give it that metallic-y sheen, that iridescence, and it helps really define the structure. It gives it that hard yet textured look, um, and I just think it's really beautiful, and I really wanted to capture that. Now I'm also using that really vivid pink to do the same thing. I want to make sure that I keep those bright little pores, and also by going right in with that pink I can kind um, figure out where my highlights need to be reserved and paint around them with a paler pink marker. So I have the set of 72 biennial brush markers. I've had them for a couple years. They're fantastic. And do you see the little bands of color on the markers? I decided to swatch them. I, I just took a piece of marker paper and I colored strips with the markers and I taped them to the barrels of my markers. And that way I have an accurate color swatch on the marker itself. I highly recommend doing this. It does take some time, but um, it's a fun puttery little thing to do when you're watching TV. It's not, it's, I find kind of puttery things like that enjoyable, but it really helps because the caps are not a perfect match for the markers and you want to make sure that you know what you're getting. Of course, I did swatches on the paper right there so you could see what colors I was using. And I also wanted to test to make sure the colors between the brush markers I had and the chisel bullet markers that I had matched, and they do. Um, I have a much larger set of the Bianyo chisel bullet tip markers. Um, it's 168, I believe. It was that new set that came out a couple months ago, and I knew that whatever colors I grabbed from the 72 set, they would probably have a match. And they do exactly by color number in the larger set, which is really handy if you, you know, have both sets of markers and you're trying to, um, you know, you need that bullet tip and you also need the brush tip. You know, the brush tip markers have a chisel on the other end, so you have both of those tips, but say you want a bullet tip, you can match. And uh, that's really handy. And um, I also like to see how the ink is going to look on the paper that I'm using. Um, I kind of jump around a bit with this because there's not a lot of blending in this beetle. It's very reflective, so when you have a reflective, shiny, a subject, you're not going to have a lot of blending. The only real blending you see is kind of the transition between that really soft lime green to the um, to the really pale blue on the side, and even there's not really that blendy. Um, now I don't have any super duper light colors in the brush markers except for that really really pale blue. Um, even the light pink is still a little bit dark, so I do have to. Um, 
lighten up my color by lightening up my pressure on the marker. And that is something you can do with a brush marker that you can't do with a chisel marker too well. Um, so with a brush marker, the reason why I think everyone's crazy about the brush markers is that um, they are a little easier and quicker to work with. And if you take that marker and you put more pressure on the nib, you're gonna get more color. If you use less pressure, you're gonna get less color. So you could essentially vary a stroke like between three different shades of color just in one marker with a brush nib versus a chisel nib where if you did that you might get one and a half shades of color you because the nib is hard on a chisel marker um, you don't have that uh, that nuance that um, subtlety of pressure that you can put on them and let up on them and get that uh, gradation of color. There's a technique in marker blending called flicking, which allows you to kind of deposit a lot of ink at the begin beginning of the stroke and let up on it. So it gives you a dark to light stroke just with one, you know, flick of the brush. So it is definitely lovely to work with. Now the downside is they're more expensive. So, you know, you just have to kind of, um, factor in what the important quality of the, of the markers are and um, what your budget is. And then you can make a really good choice for what's gonna work for you. I like both, I can use both types of markers, but um, those, a good brush marker, man, it is, it is something to enjoy, I will tell you that. Um, now I'm going in with this dark gray, this is warm gray five, which is the darkest warm gray I have in the 72 set of brush markers. And I'm going in and adding in some of my darker values and adding some of the shading on the legs and the antenna and I'm um, using some really pale um, kind of like lavender color to go in and add the really pale lavender shades that I see. I really wanted a colorful subject, so um, I thought something iridescent would be really nice. And this is also really good if you um, have a hard time drawing what you see, draw something you're not familiar with seeing up close and really keep looking back and forth between your reference and your drawing and um, and make sure you're putting in those colors you actually see where you actually see them. Because sometimes your brain wants to take over and say, I know what a beetle looks like, I'm gonna do it brown. You know, <laughs> your brain will wanna hop in there and say, I know what that looks like, I don't need to see a reference. And then you draw what you think it looks like, which isn't really what it looks like. So um, having a reference when you're learning how to color and draw is really helpful. And um, again, just layering up colors, um, blend, I, you can blend your colors together. When I need to blend colors, I generally will go in the, with a lighter shade and blend the darker shade out. I find that much easier than, um, than going the other way around. So you can give that a try. Now the marker paper that I'm using, um, the nice thing about marker paper is that it's not gonna chew up your ink. So if you have a kid that you're, wants to get into alcohol markers, getting them a marker pad is gonna make them use less ink and still get vibrant colors because it's not absorbing a lot of the ink. If they use a sketch pad, like a regular sketch pad you would use for like a pencil or even like watercolor paper, anything like that, it's just gonna drink the ink up so fast you're gonna be replacing your markers quickly. So that would be a money saving tip there. Get marker paper because it's going to um, conserve your ink quite a bit. Now on the, um, on the chisel bullet tip side, uh, now I could have just used the chisel end of the brush markers, but <laughs> I wasn't thinking that straight when I started this project. And also I figured I'd use the bullet tips a bit too. Um, you're, you kind of want to uh, block out your lighter areas and start reserving space because you're not going to have quite the nuance in uh, coloring as you will with the, um, with the brush tips. You're going to have harsher lines. Your, your, see your brush strokes are going to stop with kind of a, a blunt edge with a broad tip and, or you're gonna have a real fine line with your chisel tip. Now you can you know, turn the marker on the chisel tip and use the corner. I use that a lot or use the narrower broadside for a thinner um, blocky stroke, but you're still gonna have a little bit more of a blocky look to it. Actually, I think it's kind of a neat look. It's, it's a neat style that you only will get with a chisel marker. You'll see fashion illustrators and, um, and urban sketchers and architectural illustrators using those like really broad strokes of blocky color in their illustrations and it looks really cool. So it, again, it depends on the look you're going for. Now, time-wise, the amount of time I put on the brush side was 23 minutes, and the amount of time I put in on the chisel side was 30 minutes. Now, I did go in, in addition to that, and add some gel pen and color pencil. We'll get to that in a little bit. But um, you can see it's not a huge, like, seven minutes. That was the difference between coloring in both sides of the beetle is as uh, similarly as I could. Um, so there's not a huge time difference, but you will notice it is faster because you don't need to work the area so much with the brush tip. Um, you will find even more selection in colors on your chisel tip marker sets and, and for a lower price. So your chisel bullet tip markers from Biennial will run around 50 cents a marker, whereas the, um, the brush 
and chisel tip can run anywhere from like a dollar seventy five to um, to something a marker. The brush nibs are expensive. That's the that's the reason why brush tip markers cost more than um, than the bullet chisel tip markers. It just costs more to put in a good quality nib. Um, I mean, like if you wanted to buy the cheaper set and replace your nibs over time with the chisel, I think you'd have to replace them with a the chisel end if you wanted to do that. You would spend more money than just buying the brush nib brush nib markers to begin with. So, I mean, it is what it is. When you have to buy replacement nibs for like Copics, it it hurts you. It hurts. <laughs> You're paying like three bucks a nib for a for a Copic nib replacement, but you know it's it's an investment. Um, so I'm so glad there's so many affordable markers out on the market market now. Now I'm getting a little um, too dark with my color here on this side and I'm using the same color markers and the reason for this is you don't have that nuance of control with a chisel tip marker as you do with a brush tip marker so what that means really is that you probably need more shades and more paler shades of the chisel version if that's the route you want to go with um, but if you have more markers, it's got more ink, your markers are going to last longer. I'm just kind of explaining this out because I know there's a lot of parents and grandparents that want to get um, alcohol markers for their teens or their preteens, and they're just kind of it, it must be very difficult if you're trying to buy markers for somebody else and you don't um, and there's so many choices and you don't understand why like a brush marker costs more than a chisel marker and what you need if you get this kind and what you need if you get that, that kind. So I'm hoping being so close to the holidays is this might help you decide if you are buying from somebody else because buying for, for somebody else's hobby is very difficult. Um, so I'm going to try to help explain as much as, as, much as possible. Um, now I did implore the bullet tip a lot on this uh, mark on this side, especially when I'm doing the little pores on the shell, those little dots, because um, I know I'm going to get a perfectly round dot with that bullet tip. It's a round tip. Um, if I use the chisel tip, I might get a funky uh, squarish, um, you know, rectangle, triangle, any sort of combination there. I don't think it would be a huge deal because I, you know, I'm lazy. I tend to just use the corner of a marker if I need a fine tip for just a second. But the bullet tip is going to give you a much more consistent uh, dot if that's what you're what you're trying to do there now I had to go in with some lighter colors to kind of lighten up some areas and that is something neat with alcohol markers that you can go in with a colorless blender or you can go in with a, um, a paler color and actually kind of bleach out an area a little bit and lighten it up that is, works especially well on a more absorbent paper such as um, like a, a cardstock or a um, like a Bristol board or even a sketchy a sketchbook because you can actually push that ink right through to the back. I've done that before when I've messed up on like a, a swatch or on something I was stamping. I will just kind of color over it with a clear blender until and, you know, put scrap paper underneath until I've like pushed all that ink out of the paper, basically. Um, with a marker paper, it's got a coating on the back, so you don't use up too much ink. It prevents you from doing that. So it doesn't work as well on marker paper, but on your absorbent paper, it's really great for that. Um, so that's what a colorless blender is essentially for. It's like for erasing your mistakes, like if you go outside of the lines or bleaching out a highlight, things like that. Um, I, so because I grabbed some lighter colors and added them into the chisel side, I did grab the equivalent in the brush marker and just kind of, you know, snuck some of that color over there too, just to um, make sure I had the same colors. So your chisel markers are going to appear darker just because you don't have that nuance of being able to just let up on the nib and get lighter. Now, um, at this point, I'm done with the markers and I'm using gel pen to bring out some of the highlights. So if you're buying a gift for um, for somebody who wants markers, if you can get a white gel pen and add it to it, that is going to be so helpful and it's really going to make their markers much more versatile. Another thing that will make their markers more versatile is some colored pencils. And these can be any colored pencils. And in fact, if, if the the person you're getting the markers for already has colored pencils, maybe suggest to them that they try using colored pencils with their markers. Say you saw it on YouTube and it looked really cool. Because um, <laughs> they might be thinking, why are you suggesting this to me if you don't use markers? But um, but just, just look at adding the white gel pen. It makes the iridescence really gleam. It makes the beetle look very metallic. And, um, you know, it would be almost impossible, if not a supreme pain in the behind to try to reserve all those little specks of white color. So a nice white gel pen, that is a, that's a great stocking stuffer too. If, you're, if your kids are into marker art, um, you know, you don't know what to get them, a new gel pen is not going to go to waste because you always need to buy new white gel pens. Um, that is, that's, that would, I should do a gift guide. That would be like the perfect thing. Any watercolor painter, any marker artist, white gel pen, because you are going to use it. Um, and I just really like that I can get back to that paper white if I didn't reserve it. 
So the other thing, like I mentioned, colored pencils will really stretch what you can do with your markers. So if maybe you're like, geez, after watching this, I really want the brush markers. I know I don't need as many. Um, so maybe I'll get a smaller pack of the brush markers, which is fine. Yeah, get what you can afford. And then, um, then get like a pack of colored pencils, which are much cheaper than markers. And you can soften colors. You can blend colors together with the colored pencils. You can... Um, alter and tweak colors like that hot pink that was just way too much i can tweak it with a lighter color pencil i prefer prismacolor color pencils um, because they're a little more opaque they're wax based and they're very soft and they lay down even on the really smooth marker paper not all color pencils will lay down on the marker paper because it's so slick but the prismacolors do a good job at that and um you'll really only need a small a small set like a 24 or 36 set you don't need to break the bank um and that will work that will work wonderful. Um, but even Crayolas, anything is going to enhance your markers, um, especially if you have a small collection of colors. A uh, white one is really good. That's another stocking stuff where you can get a white and a black Prismacolor pencil. You could get a couple, um, you know, waterproof black fine liners. These biennial ones are much cheaper than the fancy brand name ones, and they last really well. I think I've only had to throw away two out of my 10 pack that I've been using almost daily for like two years. So they last really well. Um, that's not true for all you know, um, you know, ex uh, inexpensive fine liners. So I just added a little bit of black fine liner here and there to sharpen things up and sign my name. And really that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. All the supplies are linked down below. Thanks to Bayanio for sponsoring today. And until next time, happy crafting.